Hi everyone, welcome to the second part of the Standing Desk tutorial. As promised, today we are going to cover texturing, scene creation and camera setup, lighting, image rendering, animation setup, sequence rendering. You ready for that? Alright, we left off here with a fully 3D model desk ready to be textured. The first thing we do is swap to a different working area named shading. Here we can see how the material will look in our model, making the process much easier. Let's select our desk countertop, tab to enter the edit mode. Press U and select Smart UV Project to automatically UV unwrap the geometry. With the object still selected, we click on New and rename it with the material name. In this case, Wood Veneer. Now click on Principle BSDF and press Ctrl Shift T. We navigate inside our tutorial folder, Texture, Polygon Veneer, 2K, select all the maps and press Enter. Without going into detail, we just created our first realistic material. Now let's move on to the legs. New material, white. Notice how the look changes if we play with the metallic knob and how it gets shinier with the roughness one. Watching this video, I realized there are some black components underneath the desk. So we zoom in in our model, select the part and we create new material, black. For the base color, we lean towards a dark gray area. Now we select the cable, drop down menu and select black. Same exact story for the controller bracket and the controller itself. Here we need to fine tune the look a little bit better though. So we select the object, enter edit mode, press 3 for face selection and only select the frontal one. We create a second material by clicking on the plus sign, new, controller. Press shift A, search, image texture. Click and hold the yellow color dot, drag it to the base colors one and press assign. Open Blender tutorial, texture, controller PNG, open image. Now we must change our bottom left window to UV editor. Press A to select everything, R, type 90, enter, G to move it to the center, S to scale it, R, type 180, enter. Et voila, we have our controller properly textured. We forgot a couple of other parts, so same story. We select the fit, drop down menu, black. For the leg fit, drop down menu, white. And we repeat the process for all the missing parts. Once our model is entirely textured, we slightly adjust the metallic value to improve the overall look. It's time to create the scene around our desk. So we switch to top view, shift A, mesh, plane. Press G to move it under the desk. S to scale it. We change the view to properly position it touching the model's feet. Why not make it a little bigger? Enter edit mode, press 2 for edge selection, press E, Z to extrude it vertically. We select it again, command B to apply a radius. Right click, shade out to smooth and we've got a nice and uniform backdrop. Shift A, mesh, cube. Press G, X to position it, S, Y to make it longer, S, Z to make it taller and adjust the position for our wall a little closer. Now it's desk time. Press R, Z to rotate it, G and Shift Z to position it properly and our scene is ready. Time to set up our first camera. Shift A, camera. Press Option, Command, O or use the icon here to jump to the camera view. Press N, item, but first we reorganize our layers. Notice how the framing changes if we adjust the parameter in X, Y and Z. First we set our X rotation to 90 degrees, adjust the Z location like this and in the camera parameters tweak the Shift Y knob to properly frame our desk without altering the vertical lines. Switch to the layout window, press Z, render view, but everything looks pretty flat and dark. Let's fix it. First we get rid of the grid lines. Then from the upper right corner we click and hold to create a new windows like this. Adjust their size and return to the camera view. From the top view, shift A, light, area. Adjust its position like this, increase the power to 500 watt and set the size to 5000 to make the shadow softer. From the front view, Adjust the height, press R, 
Y to rotate it. Set the light size to 2000 and keep playing with the position like this. From the top view, push it back and rotate it to the Z axis. Set the power to 1000 to enhance the dramatic look and reflections on the chamfers. Replace the timeline window with the shader editor, create a new material and name it walls. Now it's time to render our first image, but first we must adjust some parameters. Go to render, fill and set the exposure value to 10. Hmm, too strong. Let's go with 2. With the camera selected, enable depth of field. Use the eyedropper tool and sample the left leg. Now we are good to go. Switch to viewport view, then render and select render image. Depending on your machine, this could take from seconds to minutes to render. Make sure the rendering setting from the part 1 tutorial match. When it's done, go to image, save as, choose destination folder, set a new name and save. Before moving forward, select slot 2 and close the rendering window. For the second camera, simply duplicate the existing one by pressing Shift D and dragging it into place. Go to View, Cameras, set active object as camera. Adjust the render settings to resolution X 2160 and Y 3840. Play with camera rotation and switch back to the rendering view. As always, ensure the workspace meets your needs and keep adjusting the camera position until you like the framing result. Switch back to viewport view, then render and render image. Repeat this process as many times as needed to create more angles of your model. Here is the result. A general view of our desk and some detailed shots with different depth of fields. Now we need to prepare the scene for animation. Hide all the previous cameras in a folder and let's define the animation we want to replicate. Create a new camera and using G, Shift, Z, move it in space to replicate the framing of our reference. Switch to render view, right click on the collection and duplicate the collection. Select all the items inside, press G and move them to the side. Make some minor framing adjustments and we are ready to keyframe the objects. First, select the right desk countertop, press G, Z, 1300 and press Enter. Select the inner leg, G, Z, type 1300, Enter. Select the intermediate leg, press G, Z, 610, Enter. This will be our animation starting point, but we need to add a new window. From the drop-down list, select Timeline. Stretch the timeline window as needed. Refer back to the reference to understand the timing and make sure that the blue line is positioned at keyframe 0. Select the intermediate legs, press N to uncover the lateral bar, right click on this section and select Insert Keyframe. Select the inner legs, right click in the same section and insert keyframe. Repeat the same procedure for the countertop and the other desk parts. Leg 1 and leg 2. Now drag the blue line to keyframe 72 and set the end of the timeline at 144. With the intermediate leg selected, press G, Z, type minus 610, enter. Right click on the same section as before, insert keyframe. Select the inner leg, G, Z, minus 1300, enter. Right click, insert keyframe. Do the same thing for the countertop. Drag the blue line all the way to frame 144 and repeat the process one last time. Move the blue line back to frame 0, press the spacebar and the animation starts in a loop with the is in and is out applied by default. Now it's time to animate the left desk, but it's your turn, so try animating it yourself. Et voilà, we made it. Our beginner animation perfectly matches our reference. As always, switch back to viewport view, render, and select render animation. Depending on your machine, rendering 144 frames could take hours. Here is the final result. As I said multiple times, this was a beginner tutorial. But if you like something more advanced or arc focus, just let me know in the comment below. 
Peace.